Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Car Moon we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you want to see more, but today I'm going to be battling the 2015 MacBook Pro against the new 2020 MacBook Pro. So let's uncover them right now. So a lot of people have been hanging on to their 2015 MacBook Pro because of its reliability and port selection. And with all the butterfly keyboard issues that have plagued Apple for the last few years, a lot of people have been avoiding upgrading their 2015 MacBook Pro. But this year, Apple has fixed that with the new Magic Keyboard. So is it time to upgrade and let go of your MacBook Pro 2015? This video was interesting for me. And yes, it's not the most scientific or the fairest test but for me it was really fun to make and I know that a lot of you guys out there keep your laptops for four five six years plus so I think that for you guys this video might actually help you decide on if it's actually worth upgrading your laptop now give this one a like if you've gained something out of this video or if you found this video very interesting as it really helps me out guys the 2020 MacBook Pro that I bought is the $1800 model which has the 10th gen i5 processor 16 gigabyte of DDR4 memory uh, of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. The MacBook Pro 2015 model is the 3.1 gigahertz i7 5th gen processor, the 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage, which at the time would have set you back just under $2,000, which I think in my opinion are the two perfect models to sort of compete against each other as you would have spent the same five years ago as it is now. So how do they fare five years on. Firstly, let's talk about those keyboards because they are running very similar keyboards. Both use scissor switch mechanisms, but the 2020 model is a refined version of what's found on the 2015 model. So the Magic Keyboard on the new model has one millimeter of travel, which I prefer, instead of the 1.5 millimeter of travel, which is found on the 2015 model. It's just the right amount of travel for me. And personally, I think that the Magic Keyboard is the best best keyboard out there. One thing that they've added is the touch bar, which is really cool in my opinion, but in my experience, it doesn't really add a huge amount of convenience. Now it does have some useful features, don't get me wrong, and there are some great third-party apps that make this touch bar a little bit more uh, useful and a little bit more powerful, but to be honest, they are few and far between, which is a shame because it's been out for four years and no one has really tried to maximize the capabilities of this touch bar and really take advantage of it. Next are the screens and they're almost identical on the surface with the same 2560 by 1600 display with 227 uh, PPI, but the new MacBook Pro has 500 nits of brightness instead of 400, a true tone display and wide P3 color gamut, which means that this new display is brighter, smarter and displays more colors than the old one. The new display is a definite nice improvement from the old one and the bezels are a lot smaller than the 2015 model, which is really pleasing to the eye. Now, yes, they're not as thin as other modern laptops, but I still think they look great in 2020. The new trackpad still uses the same force touch system, meaning that no matter where you click, it still feels the same. It's a simulator click rather than a physical click with a specialized vibration motor that makes you feel like you've clicked. However, on the new MacBook Pro, one difference is that the trackpad is a lot larger and the palm rejection is a lot better as well. The battery life is definitely better with the new model with about an extra two hours compared to the old model, which is crazy to consider because it has a lot more power in the 2020 model. Another thing that makes it better is the speakers and it's not just a little bit better, it is a lot better. Hear the difference for yourself.
Both are still using the same 720p camera, but the microphone on the new MacBook Pro is a lot better. Now, if you look to them side by side, the video quality is almost identical, but the microphone quality is a lot better on the new MacBook Pro because of its three microphone array. Now, I'll throw up some clips of those microphones and webcam quality so that you can see the difference. So this one is the MacBook Pro 2020. And as you can tell, the webcam isn't brilliant, but the microphones are really, really good on this. If we take a look at the MacBook Pro 2015, you'll see a huge difference. So as you can tell, I've tried to line up the two laptops together and the webcam is basically the same as the other one. I mean, there are some different quality differences. I don't actually know if I prefer the webcam on my 2015 than I do on my 2020. However, the one thing that is a big difference that I do prefer on the 2020 model is the microphones. As you can tell, it's not great. So let's jump into some benchmarks and see how the MacBook Pro 2015 has held up over the last five years. And also to see actually, is there any big differences between this 2015 model and the new 2020 model. The Black Magic Speed Test shows that the new SSDs on the 2020 model performs two times better than what's found on the MacBook Pro 2015, with the MacBook Pro 2015 getting a thousand megabits per second on the read and write, whereas you're seeing another thousand on top of that with the 2020 MacBook Pro. For video editing, both SSDs will actually be fast enough to edit from, so don't let this be a deciding factor. In Cinebench R20, the 2015 model got a score of 833 and the 2020 model got a score of 1905. In Novabench the 2015 model got a score of 1034 and the 2020 model got a score of 1537. Now if we have a look at Unigen Valley the 2015 model only got a score of 288 but the 2020 model got a score of 1500 and 16. What these tests show to me that across the board we should see much better performance in almost every program when using the 2020 model, which is probably something that you expected, but the differences were huge. Let's get into some 4K editing, which the 2020 model just wiped the floor with the 2015 model. The 2015 model struggled to play back uh, in higher quality when it came to 4K video editing, but the 2020 model didn't. When exporting this test project, it took eight and a half minutes uh, with the 2020 model, whereas the 2015 model took nearly 30 minutes to complete, which is a huge difference and huge time saving. So for those of you who really need those time savings, then it's a definite upgrade for you. Now, the reason for this is that G7 graphics, it just performs so much better than any other internal graphics that we've seen on any other 13 inch model. So if you're doing anything like video editing or video encoding, then this is gonna be a huge win for you guys. The cooling and noise performance was huge. The 2015 model just sounded worse than the 2020 model, especially when the fans were ramped up. Just to let you know, the temperatures stayed about the same between the two at around sort of 80-ish degrees uh, when under load, which isn't bad. Here's a quick fan noise test to see what the differences are between both models. So if you've had your MacBook Pro for about five years or more, and you were thinking, is it actually worth spending another $1,800 or so on a new one? Well, hopefully this video kind of shows you that you'll get a huge amount of gains from the upgrade. The thing is, the 2015 model could still handle all the workloads that I threw at it. You just have to adjust some of the settings and be patient with it. But if right now your workloads are just too much for your 2015 MacBook Pro, then you'll definitely see a huge performance increase with the new 2020 model. So do I recommend that you upgrade from the 2015 model? If you've had it for about three to five years, then 
Yeah, I would definitely say it's worth your money, especially now you get phenomenal value for money. Those 10th gen processors with those G7 graphics is by far the, the best upgrade that you can do for, uh, for your MacBook Pro. But there we have it. As always, this is a discussion. So please leave a comment down below on what you thought of this video and also drop me a like if you've gained something out of it. Also check out the links in the description below if you want to support the channel. If you haven't already, follow me on Twitter and Instagram Instagram at Tech Carmoon. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more and watch these fantastic videos that I handmade for you if you want to see more of my face. Anyway everyone, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.